Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be working on winter sowing some poppy seeds. I've got some beautiful varieties. I'm so excited about it, but I wanted to show you what we've got going on out here. A little bit of a problem. So we've got the lift here to get some of the Christmas lights out of the bigger trees and it's stuck. Do you think our tractor is going to be able to pull it out? <laughs> this is so much bigger. Now I don't want to assign any blame here, but one of us did think it was too wet to do this. <laughs> All right, here we go. They did it they got it out that was pretty easy not too much of a mess but yeah it is it's pretty soft back here i might be able to get the auger out and plant some bulbs i think they like a good excuse every once in a while to use the tractor for something like that anyway all right Here's where we're gonna set up to plant. For those of you who haven't tried the winter sowing method of starting seeds, it really is one of the easiest ways, like low commitment, the cats are fighting. Hey, boys, don't interrupt me, please. <laughs> Look at them, come on now. Hey, break it up, break it up, break it up. Anyway, like I was saying, it's a very low commitment, low maintenance, super easy way to start seeds. And it's very inexpensive as well. Because what we're starting seeds in are these jugs that we're recycling. This is a water jug. I've got a small collection right here. You can use orange juice containers, milk containers, anything that will allow light in. So it can be kind of like this milky kind of color or it can be clear. So we plant up the seeds in these containers. We tape them up, we pop them outside. They don't have lids on them so they can still uh, receive rain and snow and moisture that way and then we let the seeds come up on their own you do have to be a little bit mindful of the types of seeds you're starting and when you're doing that and i'll run through that in a second but once you put them outside so long as you're getting sufficient moisture uh, which for us sometimes we have like longer dry spells and i have to go out and water through the little hole in the top but in a lot of climates you won't ever even have to touch them after you plant them i mean other than that you just wait till the seeds are ready to plant outside. So other than the benefit of it being a very low cost to start sort of project, you also end up with sturdier plants in a lot of ways. You know, these plants, they're growing with kind of a little bit of a greenhouse dome over the top of them. So they are a little bit warmer or kept a little bit warmer than they would be if they were straight out in the open, but they're allowed to kind of come up with nature's natural rhythm. And they're subjected to a lot more elements than seeds that are started in a greenhouse or inside. And you don't have that hardening off process. When you have seedlings inside, they're kind of coddled. They're a little bit weaker. I mean, we try to set up fans so that they've got wind resistance and all of that. So it builds them up and makes them stronger, but we still have to harden them off over a several day period, which means that you subject those inside seedlings to more and more of the outside elements, small increments of time to begin with. And then, you, you know, gradually every day you subject them to a little bit more, a little bit more until they're hardened off and ready to go outside. And that can be quite an, uh, a process. It's a little bit of a chore to bring them in and out, in and out to harden them off. When you've got your seedlings in these milk jugs, you just open the lid let them sit there for a day and then you can plant them outside. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> They're also far less maintenance in the process because oftentimes, depending on your climate, you'll have to water them maybe not at all or minimally. You know, here, like I said, where we're drier, have drier spells, I go out and just stick the edge of my, or the tip of my sprayer down in the hole of the milk jug and then just spray it, get it a little bit moist just every once in a while. Uh, where you're getting rain throughout the spring months, you know, in those type of climates, you don't have to do anything. You just plant your seeds and then they just come up beautifully. It's kind of a magical thing. It also saves a bunch of space inside because we're storing these outside. So here's your supply list. You need some kind of jug container that allows light in. Uh, you need a way to cut it. You need some tape. Duct tape works great. Something to write on the tape with. This is a garden marker. This lasts a little bit longer than a Sharpie. And then you need just regular. This is the organic potting mix. You don't need special seed starting mix. I've already pre-moistened mine right there. And then of course you need your seeds. We're going to be focusing today on poppies. I've got 
I've got a lot of varieties in my stash, but I think I'm gonna start like 11 or 12 uh, this time around. And then I'm gonna pop some artichokes in a couple of the jugs. So the last thing is just knowing what type of seeds you can start using this method. Now we're really early, we're in January still. So you wouldn't wanna start things like tomatoes and peppers, those an eggplant, those things that uh, really like a warmer temperature. A lot of times we have a false spring in February where it warms up and probably warms up enough to get those seeds germinated. And then it gets really cold again. So I think it would get too cold for those warm season type crops. Those I would wait to winter sow until sometime probably in March for us. But this early, we can do any type of perennial, things that are hardy enough to live in our zone six. So echinacea, rudbeckias, uh, poppies, milkweed, um, any cold tolerant annual. You can do snapdragons, larkspur, those work great. I'm trying to think of other things I've done. Artichokes I've done before, that's why I'm gonna do it now. I don't want to allot a tray in the studio to growing those inside because they're an aphid magnet and they did so much better winter sowing than they did in the studio. Lupins, delphinium, foxglove, yarrow, they're a stock. There are so many different things that you can start. There are really good lists online. You can Google it. There's a really good Facebook group. I can't remember what it's called, but like winter sowing, just type that in and just a wealth of information. And it's fun to experiment as well. A few key words that you might look for on your seed packet is perennial, cold tolerant, hardy, a uh, cool season annual or cool season. Um, what else? If a seed needs a stratification period, which is like a cold period in order for it to germinate, like poppies, oftentimes on their packets, it'll say they need one month of freezing temperatures in order to germinate. So things like that, this is great for. Yeah, I think that's all I can think of. So now I'm gonna show you how to put it together. It's so easy to do. Okay, so the first thing you do is you have your jug right here. Uh, throw the top away. You wanna have some airflow and a way for moisture to enter the container. And then what I'm gonna do is make a cut starting right like halfway up the jug, right below where the handle is. But I'm not gonna cut the piece right below the handle because we want it to still be attached. So we start in here and I'll try to get some close-ups too. But we go through the center all the way around. So see that I left a little, like an inch piece right below the handle to where it's still connected. When I can pop this out, that jug was all smashed. Oh, before you do this, forget this every time, make drain holes in the bottom. It's easier to do before you cut it like this. There's one, two, three, Four. That's very important. Don't forget that step, <laughs> like me. Then you're gonna wanna take some of your pre-moistened soil and just use regular potting mix like I mentioned before. I'd use seed starting mix one year and it worked okay except for it dried out a lot faster than regular potting mix. And it's not as essential in this application to make sure that it's seed starting mix of any kind. So we'll fill this up to where there's a little bit of a lip left. Make sure to tamp it down, eliminate air pockets. This is what we're gonna sew in this first one. These are black peony poppies. Aren't they gorgeous? I'll show you all the rest of the varieties here in a second. So I'm gonna write that on this label and that will go inside the container. And then we just follow the instructions on the packet like we were putting them in regular seed trays or planting them outside. These want to be surface sown or barely covered because they, do, they need light in order to germinate. Poppy seeds are tiny. You can plant these fairly thick when you're winter sowing, we can kind of separate them later on. Poppies don't love to be transplanted, but I tried the method last year of tossing a bunch of poppy seeds just right out over the snow, which I got about five seeds or five plants out of, I don't know, thousands of seeds I spread. We just have spells that are too long and too dry. It would have probably worked had I kept them moist, but when you plant them out really late, you have to keep them wet until they come up. Um, and so that's where my problem was. I don't really want to be dragging hoses everywhere in the middle of winter trying to keep things wet out there. Okay, so now I need my mister, which I forgot. Hold on. I'm gonna settle all these seeds right in. Close the lid and tape it up. Okay, that looks to be secure right there. I'm also gonna write the name of each variety on the container. You can do it on the tape or on the container or both. 
the marker tends to last a little bit longer on the tape I found, but I kind of like to have it everywhere on the outside and on the inside. So this one's done. We're gonna set this outside and we'll just watch them grow. So now if we do have a long dry period, all I do is come along and do this and just mist through the top for a few seconds and that's all it needs. So I like to try to keep my eye on them and check them about once a week. Let's plant the second one and I'll get some close up so you can see exactly what I'm doing on this next one. Okay, so remove the lid, cut some drain holes in the bottom, three or four. And then starting right here by the handle, but leaving an inch or so below the handle, we're going to be cutting along the center of the container. Perfect. Now we'll add some soil. I'm going to press it down, not too hard, but make, firm it up a little bit so that it doesn't settle too much. Eliminates any air pockets. Try to spread them as evenly as possible. Make sure they're pressed into the soil. Mist, label, close, tape up, label again done. Isn't that just about the easiest thing ever? I mean, I'm going to plant up the rest of them and we'll get them outside and that's the last step is just to move them out. But real quick, here are the rest of my varieties. So we've already planted the cream and the black peony poppy. We've got the Elka white bread seed, frosted salmon, oh, hens and chickens, Hungarian blue bread seed, purple peony, scarlet peony, Sissinghurst white, Supreme, Swans down, oh my goodness. Uh, one other poppy called Amazing Gray, and then Green Globe Artichokes. Okay, so here we go. there they will stay for the next few months. You know, it was either last year or the year before, I tried out the Amazing Gray poppy variety using this sewing method, and they actually transplanted beautifully, bloomed, did really well. So I was encouraged by that. And this is just, for me, an easier way to do poppies because I can more easily control the water here than trying to scatter seeds everywhere. Uh, it might work if I scattered them knowing exactly where the drip line was, but all of our drip line is under mulch, so I can't really tell exactly where they are. And that was where I had my success last year, my small amount of success scattering those poppy seeds just out in the winter time. The ones that did come up came up right where the uh, drip emitter holes were. 
I just happened to get them in an area where we had drip irrigation run already. Now for some of the seed varieties, like with the Green Globe artichokes, you see I just put four seeds in there because those are such robust thick, like dense seedlings. You know, the leaves are really strappy and thick and they just need the extra space. While a lot of other varieties or types of plants you can get away with seeding fairly heavily inside those containers. And there have been some years where I just almost treat them like a cell, like I'm planting in cells and do like six or five in there so that they're very easy to separate. And I think that's just something that you have to figure out along the way, which way you like to do it. So anyway, at this point I'm done. I just have to keep my eyes on them for water. I'm gonna put a weekly reminder in my phone today so that I remember to come out here and check them out and you know the nice thing about these is that you can tuck them away I've got them behind the barn and greenhouse kind of that area where we store all the rest of our stuff uh, so it's nice that you can tuck them away a little bit however if you do tuck them away make yourself a reminder somehow somewhere so that you don't forget about them out of sight, out of mind. And you guys, that's it for today's project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you feel inspired to do some winter sewing. You will not be disappointed, I promise. See you guys in the next video. Bye.